Welcome to tonight's episode of Secular Soapbox. I'm joined by my guest co-host, Secular Rarity, and we have the privilege of having our guest, Eric from Skeptics and Scoundrels. Our topic tonight is when does religion become a cult? Let's start the show. I was watching you dance. Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. We're I didn't, here. Are we, yeah, what's, what's, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being my co-host tonight. Yeah, I'm super excited. Yay. I always I love think... getting to hang out with you. So. I know. It's so fun. So awesome. Um, and we are so excited to have Eric come on, who is... Oh, oh, we almost had him. There and back. Ah. Oh, he, he's here. <laughs> Hey, Eric. Hi. Um, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, busy good. day today, but I'm glad Is I was it? able to make it <laughs> over here you. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, one thing I forgot to say at the beginning is don't forget to like the video if you're here. Subscribe. We have lots of great content here. And also, uh, you can become a patron on Patreon, which we'll talk oh, yes. about that later. But um, so we can get to the show. Um, so, Eric, uh, let's talk about religion and cult yeah. and all those things. Yeah. So um, basically, when do you think, I mean, that's the main question, but I was thinking about this all day today and sort of preparing, but... Um, when I think of a cult, I think of sort of what SR and I were talking about before you got here. And I think we automatically think of crazy religions like the Moonies yeah. or mm -hmm. um, the Hare Krishnas, mm -hmm. uh, those really wacky ones that come to mind. But and then I was talking to my husband beforehand. I said, what do you think makes a religion a cult? And he said, I think someone who requires ultimate devotion, someone or or, or an organization mm -hmm. that requires your time and money, uh, someone or an organization that would kind of uh, ostracize you or exclude mm -hmm. you once you're done. Or, and I said, oh, kind of like our church <laughs> when we were leaving. So mm -hmm. there's yeah. like it's I, it's almost like a spectrum. So yeah, I think it kind of is. Um, and, and that's, that's a great first place to start is just the question, what does the word cult mean? Mm -hmm. Um, because it's such a, it's such a fuzzy word that anybody uses differently. I mean, if you ask 10 different people, what do you think a cult is? They're probably going to give you 10 different answers. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember one time, cause I mean, I, I'm a former Jehovah's witness, so yeah, I, that's right. I, I believe that they're a cult and I have, um, I will not, I have, but I read a few different books on cults and uh, I adopted Stephen Hassan's The Bite Model as my standard for what a cult is. Mm -hmm. And the witnesses fit that model very, very well. Um, but I remember uh, about six years ago, I was talking to a, a now former workmate of mine who actually grew up on a commune in a high control community with a oh, leader. Wow. Like he grew up in one of like the classically, you know, idea type cults. Right. And when I said I was thought I was raised in a cult too, he says, no, I was raised in a real cult because mm -hmm. I didn't have the commune farm involved in the equation. Right. And I was like, that's not, that's not a requirement for a cult. You don't need to have yeah. a commune for that, yeah. but that's what he thought. Right. And so, but if you go to somebody else, they'll say, oh, a cult is, I don't know, an MLM or a cult is, you know, uh, 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 Trumpism, you know, the, the mm -hmm. whole political movement around Donald Trump. And yeah, I think a, a great first place to start is what is a cult? And mm -hmm. um, I think the Stephen Hassan bite model works really well, which I think we can go into maybe yeah, here definitely. in a bit, just kind of explain to people who don't haven't heard about it. Um, I actually do have a copy of his book right here. Oh, do you? Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I pulled it off my shelf when, when oh, he perfect. contacted me about the topic tonight. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. I was like, okay, <laughs> nice. I, I, I know a little bit about this because I've read a few books about it. Yeah. I think I, yeah. I, I consider myself my personal experience having also have been in a cult. I have a little bit of insight in it. Maybe a little. Definitely. You know? Yeah, definitely. Um, SR, what do you, were you raised in a cult like church? No, 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 um, no, for sure. I, I, I definitely, my religious upbringing was not one that 
had anything close to the bite model. And I, and I'm really glad you brought it up so early, Eric, cause yeah, I, you, you said something and I was like, Oh, I've got this good question. I wonder what he thinks about this. But before we do that, I think it's really important to talk about what that, what that model is and, and why that, you know, definitely does seem to apply to like the JWs and Scientology mm -hmm. yeah. and Mormonism. So um yeah because i i think that's a, i think that's a fantastic i'm not sure that there's anybody else out there that has done as much work as stephen hassan but um yeah what what is that bite model for anybody that that's unfamiliar yeah so the bite model uh is a model put together by a guy named stephen hassan which i'll see if i can get him to, to focus on <laughs> yeah. oh yeah i think he did it <laughs> nice. yeah oh, there we go. nice stephen hassan uh, he's a he's a if you watch him in interviews and and uh, videos, he's a really nice guy, um, very he knowledgeable does. and passionate about the subject because he himself was a member of the Unification mm -hmm. Church, uh -huh. known AKA the Moonies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, is an interesting. Inter yeah. It's, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. It's very um, strange. <laughs> but anyway, he he was in there for a few years until his family intervened and managed to get him out. And part mm -hmm. a big part of that was removing him from that environment and essentially kidnapping him and holding him against his will and away from them for a while just wow. to break that that spell that was on him. So a little fuzzy around the legalities of the way it went down, but it did work and it got him out. Um, yeah. and anyway, he, he reflected back and he says, Hey, how this happened? What happened to me? Started reading books about it. He read, um, uh, I was just reading a couple of chapters today in preparation for this, but he ended up reading, uh, some more classically, mm -hmm. uh, some more classic, um, almost there. Hold on. That's okay. Some older, um, material on it. Hypnotism, mind control versus brainwashing. Here we go. Uh, he was reading Dr. Robert J. Lifton's book, Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism. Oh, um, okay. And it it laid out some some criteria for a cult. And it was basically like, you know, seven or eight categories. Yeah. And he took that and then he did some reflection on it. And he came up with what was called the bite model. So mm -hmm. bite is an initialism or bite. It's an acronym because you say it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, B I T E. So bite stands for behavior, information, thought, emotions. Yeah. If you have a group that exerts undue influence, unhealthy control over those four things in your life, then it's considered a high control group or a cult. And he breaks right. down each one of those letters, goes into detail about what exactly is behavior control? What exactly is thought control? And you have like, you almost make a checklist. And if you want to evaluate a, a an organization, based on this checklist you can just go down the checklist and just start checking them off right and i right. did that i did that with the witnesses and they they there was a lot of check marks uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. so yeah that's that's his experience with it his, i his i know some people who uh i know some people who go to crossfit in such a way that honestly <laughs> bro it's like you might yeah. you might want to start checking some boxes yeah. Here, so. yeah i actually read a book last year called i think it's called cultish and she mentions how even um fitness groups so it's funny you would say that crossfit yeah. it doesn't have to just be religion it can be like you said mlms it can be right. fitness and yeah you can start to adopt those mm -hmm. same cult uh you know uh mentality with with different groups and also language really plays into that um just developing just different ways that you speak within that group um yeah so it's yeah. A, it was a really good book cultish by i think it was by amanda i have to look it up but i recommend that one a lot and uh, she went into so many different areas yeah. of cult but anyways just, you raise yeah. you raise actually a really good point there in that um a cult doesn't necessarily have to be religious mm -hmm. it can be commercial cult it can be a political cult it can be a cult of personality and also religious um so it yeah, religion is not a necessary component of a cult. You can still have a group that is unhealthily, you know, influence you, controlling you, that has nothing to do with a god or uh, any type of divine figure. It can just be like a political that, group or a commercial group book. or whatever. Yeah. Thank you yeah, there for you go. that, Fern. <laughs> that's the book. I'll pick that up. I haven't I haven't heard that book, but I'll pick it up. Yeah, it was really good. Um, so when I looked at the bite model, because isn't it fairly new? I think it's... I think the bite model it's not, 
it's not too new. Not like, too new. Okay. Um, so Stephen Hassan was in the Moonies back in the 70s. Yeah. I think his first edition, this is the second edition. Uh, okay. So it's revised. Interestingly enough, the Jehovah's Witnesses are not mentioned at all in the first edition, but they are yeah, mentioned really? multiple times in this edition. Yeah. Um, huh. So uh, That's... this is the 2015 edition. Okay. And his first edition is a 1988 edition. So oh. it was almost 30 okay, years. Never mind. I thought it almost was 30 years newer. between first and second edition. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Well, when I went through the bite model, because um, I only came across it in like two years ago, and I thought, okay, I'm going to just look at this yeah. and, and see what, what does it have to say. And as I went through each one, I mean, obviously, I didn't check off every single <laughs> yeah. box because you don't have to. Yeah. And yeah, you don't, that's the point. You don't yeah. have to check off every single thing, but even just having, quite a few from each category i thought okay um i think i think what i'm in is a cult because i know that um even like nexium that mlm cult yeah. that's the sex cult yeah, right you brought that up. yeah and so sometimes i you know you think well and a lot of those other cults where they have a lot of devotion to their leaders like the waco texas um cult I think they have they have a lot of you know sex involved with that one as yeah. well. Um, I always thought, well, I don't think that it would necessarily fall under like like Christianity or or what I was in would fall under that because they don't really can. We're not having sex with with our leaders right. or anything. Right. But then when I thought about it, you know what? When it comes to purity culture, they really do control who you can and can't have sex with. So yeah, actually. I can check that box off. Yeah. And when I just thought about it in a different framework, um, it, it they do control it. So yeah. Just, and, and Eric, uh, what you had said earlier had, had led me to this, this question. Cause I I've heard sometimes more so I find on the religious side when, mm -hmm. when these types of conversations are happening that they'll say, Oh, well, you know, you got to be careful about calling stuff a cult. You, yeah. know, you don't just want to call things a cult. You know, that's going to that that takes away from the real cults. Right. And I, I guess, you know, that that brings up the question of what is the value of calling certain groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses, even though it's a large organization? What's the value in actually saying, hey, no, these are cults. Why, why do that? Yeah, I think I think the best way to answer that question with any individual is, like I said, get cult defined first and mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of demonstrate or show to them, hey, a, a, an organization that wants to control you to such a degree, mm -hmm. basically remove your autonomy, remove your critical thinking, uh, uh, divert your time and resources and money to their interests rather than yours or some other group's mm -hmm. interests. Um, I think anybody who hears a group described as doing that would understand, wow, this is something dangerous potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think what really gets people is that it, the mind control that's 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 involved in it. Huge. So, some people describe it as brainwashing, but brainwashing is a form of mind control, but it's not quite what I think these cults really participate in. Mm -hmm. uh, because you aren't like tied to a chair with a light in your face and then waterboarded <laughs> until you right. give in and do whatever they want. I mean, that's like... You know, uh, there's examples of, you know, POWs being brainwashed and doing things they wouldn't normally do under normal circumstances. Uh, mind control or more in general is is something that's much more insidious and harder to detect, especially for the individual that is being, you know, uh, uh, inflicted upon. Mm -hmm. So if you can get a person to understand that, that, hey, these these groups are not out for your best interest. You are a resource to them. You're a commodity. You're a pawn. Mm -hmm. um then hopefully at that point then people can start to appreciate that okay if if there are we know there's groups out there that want to do this and we have a means to identify them then we should be interested in which groups are called cults which groups are called or, you know which religions right. can be considered that so that you can avoid that or better yet help people to get out of it if you mm -hmm. are you know associated with somebody who might be in it yeah so yeah. how do you think like how would you go about having a conversation with someone that you think might be in a cult because i'm just trying to think that's a great i have yeah, friends who question. are are in the i mean i don't necessarily have a lot of communication with them anymore but i think it would probably take them reaching out to me mm. but if if, it, if the opportunity presented itself how how would you start those conversations 
That's a good you question. Um, <laughs> not it, to put you on the spot, but yeah, I'm not the like, out loud. Yeah. Like, ha- I have, have you had them at all? I, I have. I have okay. actually. Um, and it, I, it depends on the cult. It's really hard to understand mm-hmm. how every single religious cult works. Yeah. I really understand how the witnesses work. And I know what strategies would work and mm-hmm. which ones will shut down the conversation immediately. Yeah. If you, you know, some people you might want to come out guns blazing and just mm-hmm. lay it out straight and tell them, Hey, this is what I'm seeing going on. Here's why I'm right. concerned. Mm-hmm. And that might, some people might respond to that, but, mm-hmm. uh, in the case of the Jehovah's witnesses, their members are indoctrinated and influenced to the point where they're told any negative information about us, our organization comes from Satan. Right. So if I were to go to a Jehovah, and actually I've had Jehovah's Witnesses at my door the past five weekends. Um, oh, really? I, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, now that busy. COVID restrictions have lifted, yeah, yeah. I've had, I had, I, it's it's one guy um, and whatever partner he has for that week, and they've been coming mm-hmm. to my door every weekend for five weeks. Um, and I I haven't told them I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness. I'm never going to tell them I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness because I'm an apostate. I'm working for Satan. The conversation right. will shut down immediately. Right. Okay. And if I... If it, when they come to the door, I can't say I've done research in Jehovah's Witnesses. I think they fit the bite model. The bite model identifies cults and yada yada, and they're just yeah. gonna shut down and leave. Yeah. Um. So it really depends on who you're talking to. Um. Mm-hmm. Because I know that the witnesses are so insulated and so conditioned against negative thinking about that, you have to instead ask questions. Get them to come to the conclusion themselves. Get them to do the uh, the evaluation and the thinking themselves. Mm-hmm. If you get on that topic, right? We haven't. We've talked mostly about Bible and doctrine, so I actually haven't talked specifically about the organization with them. Okay. It may get to that point, in which case I will start broaching questions that will hopefully point them in the right direction. Um, but for other people, you know, there might be some people that, hey, yeah, coming out and just saying, hey, I think you're in a cult. Let's <laughs> talk about it. Uh, might work. Yeah. In other cases, you can't. You can't even touch those sentences because no. they're going to shut down. So it, it's really a case by case basis. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, my grandma had a book on her bookshelf that I grew up looking at my whole life and it was called the kingdom of the cults, which was actually yeah. written by a Christian, I believe. And it called out like all the different cults in the world. And I remember, I think I was very little and I just, it was the word cult was so bold. Yeah. And I, I asked her, I said, what is, what is a cult? A scary word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she told me, but how she described it was, oh, they're, they're the Mormons, they're Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They think they're Christians, but they're not Christians. So we stay away from them. They're the ones yeah. that come to the door. So that's what I thought of. And, um, the, the book always fascinated me. And, um, when I got older, I actually bought it and, and read through it. Cause I would just wanted to, to know, I, I had this like fascination with cults. I have mm. to say, since I was a kid. Um, and then when I was 18, I dated someone who was part of the seventh day Adventists oh. and, and, uh, my family was like, they're in a cult. Like you can't, <laughs> I don't think you should date them. And so I got like obsessed with researching how the Seventh day Adventists came to like form and, and what their doctrine was. And so yeah. I started doing that. And then I I did that with Jehovah's Witnesses and, and so on and so forth. But the thing that I would always think in the back of my mind is okay, all those people in those groups all think that they are believing the truth, believing the Bible, believing. So they don't think they're wrong. And I also am believing the Bible and I don't think I'm wrong. How do I know I'm not in a cult? And I had that like nagging question my whole life. And I was petrified because I'm like, they don't think they're in a cult and they think they're doing the right things. So I really think just having that like for me personally, having that like interest yeah. in cults is kind of what got me out of it because I, I just, I was obsessed with researching like how things started and knowing like the genesis of these beliefs. And so, yeah, th- yeah. that's, that's actually one of the questions that Stephen Hassan will ask classes that he speaks in front of. It's one of the first questions he asks. He says, okay. he's asked students, if you're in a cult, how would you know? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. the, the same, the same question can be asked to Jehovah's witnesses, um, because Jehovah's witnesses have like a governing body 
uh, I think it's eight, nine or 10 members right now. It's like nine or 10 men in New York city. And they're like the leadership. And, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that they liken to themselves about, you know, they're, they're known as the faithful and discreet slave in the new Testament. Mm -hmm. And you want, and, and Jesus said to be on guard, if this slave goes bad and starts abusing, you know, the church. And so one of the first thing, or one of the things you can ask witnesses is, you know, and, and witnesses use this as, you know, our, our, our garment body is so great. They don't abuse us. They're, they're, they're the true faithful and discreet slave, but you can ask them, it's like, okay, well, if they were to go bad, how would you know it? What what could they do that would get your brain to latch on to that? Um, and yeah, the same thing can be asked uh, just about any anybody that might be in a high control group. It's like if yeah. this this was a cult, let's just say hypothetically you're in a cult. Mm -hmm. What identifiers can you find? How can you know? Yeah. How can you start researching in into whether or not you're actually in a cult? Yeah. Um, because yeah, coming out, like I said, guns blazing, telling them you are in a cult that that's going <laughs> to shut down conversation, shut down thinking it tends yeah. to, it tends to raise shields and put up barriers yeah. and walls in the mind because it, it, the mind doesn't want to deal with that. Um, for instance, like my oldest brother, he's, he's in his mid fifties. He's been a Jehovah's witness his entire life. He's one of the last mm -hmm. people in my family to remain in the religion. And there's such a, a lifelong investment in it. And there's such a, a sunk cost going on there yeah. that yeah. these are huge hurdles that he would have to overcome in order to get himself out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those hurdles can become too high after you devoted 50, 60, 70 years of your life to a religion. And then you realize it's false. Yeah, Like your brain doesn't want to deal with that. So your brain will just ignore it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so just asking the right questions, drawing people out, getting them to do the thinking for themselves. Yeah. And more generally, that's why I'm so interested in street epistemology <laughs> yeah. is because mm. it, that's that's exactly what it's designed to do is is to get people to do the thinking themselves, direct the conversation in a way where you can identify contradictions in a position through questions. Mm -hmm. And that will hopefully get some juices flowing and get them to actually, you know, start processing these things internally and not right there in front of you. Like you're going to ask questions. You're going to identify contradictions. They may double down on things because, hey, you're 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 threatening their worldview. You're threatening their sure. religion and their personal relationship with God and such. Um, you have to just simply let them raise those defenses, let them double down in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And then later on, leave the thinking to them later on, not mm -hmm. now when I'm talking to you, but later on when they're, you know, they're away from the heat of the conversation. They are right. they got time to process. They're going, mm -hmm. you know, they're relaxing and no longer, you know, at red alert. Tense. Um, yeah. yeah. Let, and then let them stew on it and let them think. And then they'll eventually, hopefully start to ask themselves more honest questions and start giving themselves more honest answers. Yeah. It's a, it's a long process. And the same thing for drawing people out of, out of cults. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It's going to be a long process, multiple right. conversations from your point of view. You're going to say, I'm not getting anywhere with this person because they keep on doubling down or they keep on getting mm -hmm. more defensive. But uh, in the in a couple of books that I've been reading, especially, uh, I don't think I have it here on me. Uh, uh, How to create an atheist by uh, the Gaussian. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. um, I think I've heard of uh, that. Yeah, that's them doubling down is a good sign because that that means that their defenses are rising. That means you're 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 asking the right questions. If you're you see hitting that. a nerve. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it took a long time for them to internalize all of yeah. this. You know, for them to accept the the level of control that others have exerted on their life, that it it unfortunately it it isn't just one conversation thing. Yeah. Um, no. It it does make me it does make me wonder, and I I don't know if you have a great answer. I, I also don't know if this is throwing the show off its pace, Eric. So we're oh, both God. just kind of yeah, just we're stepping off the ledge here. <laughs> but um, we can do whatever we want. Is, is there is there maybe um a technique some something you could put into practice say the the first time you kind of find yourself in this new space and you're thinking like i don't know this feels a little culty but i i just like don't have time to like go sit down and check off all the boxes and like yeah. is there maybe something that you could do in the mm -hmm. moment that that is a little bit more right here right now like okay now i need to go investigate more yeah, that's that's why I like the bite model so much is because it's you you have those just very broad general categories, behavior, mm. information, thoughts, emotions. Just ask yourself those mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. Is this group trying to include influence my behavior? Mm -hmm. Are they telling me what I should wear, who I should hang out with, what movies I should watch or shouldn't watch? Uh, thoughts, are they telling me, hey, uh, internally questioning is wrong? 
or that, uh, you know, this, like if it's political, you know, uh, political cult, this politician is 100% bad, this politician is 100% good. Uh, you can ask those very, very broad general questions that don't mm -hmm. involve you sitting down and doing homework. <laughs> and you can, you can figure out little indicators. Okay, I'm, dis I'm sensing like a disturbance in the force around yeah. emotions. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. I, I, I feel like I'm being told I should be happy all the time. That's, mm -hmm. that's not right. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you can, you can kind of get a, it's almost like, you know, like a smoke test. We call that in, in software development, we call these smoke tests. Uh, they're very broad, general tests that will indicate that a problem might be present, but mm -hmm. it's not like extensive testing going down and drilling down and figuring out exactly what the problem is. Yeah. It's like looking for smoke. Like there might be a fire here if there's smoke. Right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. uh, if you can just very broadly mm -hmm. ask yourself those questions, and then if you identify one of those categories that hey you have some, some concerns with, then you can go and you know drill down and, and start asking yourself more detailed questions about that. Um, that. But Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just saying I love that. Don't please continue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, it, most groups that want to recruit you, it'll take a little mm -hmm. bit of time. They're going to have to introduce you to the group. Um, they, and they might be an innocent group. You might just might just be a club at school or at university mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, the chess club. You know, if the chess club is probably not telling you what to wear, what to think, <laughs> yeah, or exactly. how to be happy all the time. And don't be angry when you're losing. Like, the, the chess clubs aren't going to do that usually. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, they do but, have black and white thinking, though. I will say, oh that. I, 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 oh, wow. slid that one mind. in real quick. Uh, How did I missed that. I know. Wow. Going to kick me off in a moment. <laughs> very, very strict hierarchy in chess, too. You have oh, all to the king. Oh, oh my that's god, good. that's good. Good. Uh, all right. uh, so, yeah, and uh, so many puns. Yeah, and just, just, just <laughs> smoke. Just, just look for smoke. Like, I mean, just, yeah. just, just sniff the air and say just something fishy about this, and and you know, then start drilling and later on. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it, you may have, you may have a group that might seem like it has some issues around a certain category, but then you examine it and it turns out it doesn't, maybe you misinterpreted something, maybe somebody sure. was just kind of just misrepresenting or being a little bit too passionate about what they were telling you about the group. Um, it, it, it depends. Um, yeah. and, uh, I, yeah, it's, and there's so many groups in the world and everything, er, literally everything in media wants to influence your thinking one way or the other i mean yeah. even yeah. us right, right here right yeah exactly even us right here, we're, advertising we're, yeah we're, they, they want to influence what you buy yeah, so yeah advertising wants to influence what you buy who you vote for mm -hmm. uh disney obviously wants you to watch disney movies so their advertising is going to gear you towards right. that even us here we're here to influence people if they're watching yeah. this we want yeah. to show them hey religions aren't the greatest thing in the world hey maybe <laughs> we should ask more questions around these things like even us we're trying to influence people mm -hmm. um but the means and the manner by which you go and do that is what's important Exactly. Um, the really extreme end is, like I said, kidnapping somebody and programming them and, and brainwashing them. Right. Other means are more insidious. Um, yeah. You know, hey, we have a we have a big loving group and come join us. And oh, hey, this is so great. You know, welcome to our church. And we do all these awesome things. And oh, your mother is talking bad about us. Maybe you shouldn't quite talk to her about us anymore. In fact, tell you what, like maybe maybe cut down your your association with her a little bit because she's a bad influence on your life. Yeah. And things start creeping in that way. And before you know it, you're being told who you can't be with, who you can't talk to, what websites you can't go to and read up on things. Um, uh, don't have negative thoughts and emotions. You should be happy all the time because, hey, we're we're the one and only true religion. God's on our side. Why aren't you happy? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm know. having all these flashbacks. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. And this is exactly this is exactly what. Uh, a lot of us have gone through. I mean, I went through this with the witnesses. Stacy, you went through this with your religion. So many, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And yeah, and many of the people I've talked to are are they've had similar experiences. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I could just give so many stories, as I'm sure you could too. Oh my gosh, especially just saying like, don't don't feel negative. It was always. Yeah. Just, I have a speak positively. Oh, yeah. 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 One one of the, I think the worst things that the Joe's witnesses could have done for their cause. It's about 10 years ago, maybe longer than that. I think they were just starting to get this ramped up when I left 14 years ago. They they are putting a lot of their resources into video production. They think mm -hmm. that video production is the newest, best way to, you know, spread their message. And uh, up to up to that point, the governing body, those back then it was eight. Now mm -hmm. I think there's nine or ten. Um, those eight men were like kind of just like man behind the curtains type you know, stuff in, they lived in New York, they directed the organization. Um, but I didn't know their names for the most part. I never, 
I mean, I knew maybe one or two of their names. I think I met one of them once, like 20 okay. years ago, who he came out to dedicate a kingdom hall, one of the churches, a, new, a newly built church. Um, anyway, once the video production started, those guys made themselves essentially the stars of these shows. And now every month, okay. one of them, at least one of them is appearing on JW Broadcast, which is their video production company. And they're they're on video saying things constantly for the last decade. So we have a ton of ammunition now to take what they're saying and say, look, information control, look, behavior control. Um, I wow. think one of the biggest ones that stands out to me is um, Tony Morris, who was just stepped down or removed as a governing body member. That's kind of a different story, but mm -hmm. kind of unprecedented for this to happen. But anyway, he just got deleted or whatever off the, off the governing body. He is on video saying, don't go to websites we don't approve. Like literally verbatim, don't go to websites we don't approve. Yeah. Only go to resources that we tell you are okay. <laughs> and wow. like, bam, information, That's... like huge red flag. When you're being told not to go to certain websites yeah. or websites negative of your organization, huge red flag. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's for them the, to just like blatantly say that. Oh yeah, out, yeah. Out of, his, out of his own, out of the leader's mouth. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't have asked. You couldn't have asked for a better statement to be I, like, yeah. "Oh, there you go, Colt." I silver, mean, it's silver it's right bullet. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Silver bullet right there for wow. the for the eye and oh, bite. Yeah, yeah. I was well, I was oh. going to ask if you thought them becoming more public and doing more broadcasts and stuff may have been beneficial for getting people out of that it has been but yeah it sounds like it sounds yeah, like it, it definitely has been, been. Okay. There's, there's many new xjw's who who COVID was a big deal because mm -hmm. when COVID hit nobody could go to the kingdom halls anymore everybody was at sure. home and it was it was 100 percent video that's when a lot of people started waking up because you're away from that social presence mm -hmm. that social reinforcement of the congregation mm -hmm. and the people you know you're now limited to Zoom, JW Broadcasting, and whatever else you want to do because no one's watching. <laughs> yeah. And so now you have a lot of more people waking up. Oh my goodness. And I've heard more than one story of somebody saying, I just watched these clowns on JW Broadcasting saying these things. And I was like, I, I couldn't accept this. Like, it was just too bizarre. Yeah. Because they, like I said, it's it's a, it's a bunch of men. So they're going to have different opinions. They're going, there's going to be a little bit of politics there. There's going to be some, you know, one guy says one thing, another guy says another thing. And if you track what they say on these broadcasts, you kind of see they're kind of like taking little shots at each other sometimes yeah. because they don't necessarily agree on something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and, and, and some people can detect that and then people see that and they, they, they wake up. Um, mm -hmm. and I believe during COVID, I believe they actually experienced their negative growth for about a year, at least wow. one year, possibly two. It oh. was, it was very small negative growth, like negative half still. percent or negive one and a half percent, but it's still <laughs> negative growth. It's yeah. still, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, I was we, really happy to hear that. We need to have a term for people who left during COVID because I'm one of them, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah. we do, we do need to have a term. I'm sure there'll be something written in a book of some yeah. kind. Yeah. Um, I was had my mouse hovering over this to highlight it, but thank you, Dandy, for your ten dollars super chat. Uh, he says, "I'm in the skeptic haven cult." Here is my June dues. <laughs> they actually Cheers. they actually went up, Dan. Sorry, yeah. but they, they oh, went no. up a little bit. I know it sucks. Oh, no. oh. Uh, thank hey, you Dan, so that's not ten percent. That. Yeah, yeah. You only a hundred dollars this month, Dan. Don't try to fool. <laughs> Um, we do have some questions that are highlighted. Uh, do you mind if I just post a couple and we can just absolutely ask? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, um, from Iron Charioteer, uh, do you think magical thinking is a major part of fostering and f uh, f fomenting? fomenting? Fomenting. Okay, I tend to say words wrong when I'm reading these. So it's a it's a silly word. <laughs> okay, it is a silly word. Okay. Fomenting or fomenting? Fomenting. To okay. fermenting. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, I'm thinking okay. fermenting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All silly. All very, all, <laughs> all very silly. silly words. <laughs> okay. I should have let you, actually, you know what? I'm going to let you read the super chat or the questions because I say I'll do, wrong. I'll do next one because Please. Dan, Dan donated. So now, now okay. I can get paid. Okay. okay. Um, okay. So I'll start again. Do you think magical thinking is a major part of fostering and fomenting cults? And how do we get rid of magical thinking? Mm. Yeah. I definitely think it's 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 part of fostering and fomenting religious cults. Um, yeah. you are, uh, although you know, maybe not all political cults might be immune to that. Like, I mean, there's people who say that that Donald Trump is is God sent. You know, mm -hmm. um, the, the QAnon stuff is yeah. is a cult. It is outright oh, yeah. a cult. Yeah, oh it, yeah, 
hits all the all the criteria y'all oh yeah. definitely that yeah, is yeah. another rabbit trail that i went down investigating yeah. everything i could and check that off yep cult <laughs> yep. yeah yeah mm -hmm. I, I think i think that's where street epistemology comes in really handy there mm -hmm. because um uh part of street epistemology is to establish to the person that hey you have two different epistemologies at play here you have you have a thought process and a critical thinking process that you apply to everything else in your life if a salesman comes to your door or a guy comes to your door and says uh you know hey you want a million dollars just i just need your information right here uh yeah. you know, social security uh, you know. like obviously somebody did that most of us we go like no this guy is not for real um you're operating critically there. Your thoughts are, are being, you're critically analyzing the situation yeah. and making a wise decision skeptical. based off of, you know, <laughs> reason and logic and experience. But for some reason, when it comes to religions, there's a completely different set of processes mm -hmm. at play, a completely mm -hmm. different epistemology yeah. that is for this one special thing. And that mm -hmm. special thing involves magic usually. Like with the case of Jehovah's Witnesses at my door, um, they think, Adam and Eve were literal people. They think Noah's flood actually occurred. They think Bible prophecy is a real thing. So they think magical magic's essentially at play here. And I, I was actually using that term in front of them many times. I was saying God magic. Like, so you're like, you know, um, with the case of Noah's flood and like the heat problem, like just the amount of heat that would be generated by a worldwide oh, flood on the planet. And it would, it would essentially turn us into a plasma ball. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. especially if you start thinking, oh, the, the tectonic movements, the continents moved apart meters per minute during the flood, which some people think. Um, it's like, no, the, the heat involved in that, um, I, I like Guts of Gibbons videos on these because mm -hmm. she describes the heat as hydrogen bombs per kilometer type <laughs> metric of heat. It's like, that's a lot of heat. It's um, insane. It is yeah. insane. It's one of the one of the best freaking arguments out there yeah. against uh, yeah. young earth creationism. And that's why yeah. she latches onto it so much and other people yeah. do because it, it is a problem. It's and awesome. the only way you can get rid of this is saying, well, God, God magic. God just magicked it away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you gotta getting people with street epistemology, getting people to, to admit that, hey, this the, the 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 epistemology, the process you're using to evaluate whether these are true or false, you would not use for anything else. Yeah. Here's right. why. Here's all the problems with it. You can believe anything on faith. Uh, you tell me this, uh, your book tells me this, some other book tells me that. I have no way to decide which is true. Right. What do you have? What can you provide me that makes you stand up and apart from the rest of it? And identifying, you know, uh, those issues there hopefully can get people to wake up, hopefully to get them to say, hey, you know what, maybe magic isn't a good explanation for anything. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's definitely a big hurdle to overcome is getting people to divorce themselves from the idea that you know, I have a I have a friend in the sky who can literally do anything. And therefore, any of my questions, any problems I have, I can just say, hey, my friend in the sky took care of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, you can read the next one, SR. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another one from Iron Charioteer. Uh, James Tabor did an intensive and deep dive into the cult of David Koresh from Waco, Texas. How do you explain the magnetism of certain cult leaders and prosperity gospels? Good question. I like yeah. that. I like that username, by the way. Iron oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very yeah. cool. Iron nice reference. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a really good question. Uh, like, just I I sit back and I look at like Donald Trump and I'm like, how, what do mm. people see in this guy? Like, I don't right. understand what, sure. how people can see this guy as intelligent or as honest. Um, like, you listen to him for five minutes at a speech or even like he's been arraigned and now you're listening to like his, his, uh, his testimony, his disposition in court. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. just, yeah. just, just the, the, the mess of a mind this guy has. And I'm like, how do people look at this and go, yeah, this is somebody I want to follow. I, I don't understand. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's really odd mm -hmm. humans, you know, we're, we're, we're just apes. <laughs> like we have, yeah. we have very primal brains. Some people just have that magic combination of charm and words and kind of just energy mm. they put off yeah. that just yeah. resonate with some people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it can be very easy to just kind of get wrapped up into somebody and, and, and start doing whatever they want you to do. Um, yeah. I, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I can't explain what's <laughs> yeah. going on there. Um, cause there's, I mean, there's some people that you listen to and you're like, wow, this guy's really, yeah, I agree with this guy just because I like, mm -hmm. I like what he says or I like how he's saying it. Um, and so I can, you know, I can see how I, I could get 
wrapped up in somebody if mm-hmm. somebody said the right mm-hmm. things to me in just mm-hmm. right oh, manner. definitely and then like i said on the opposite end i'm like other people i'm like how are people following donald trump i, I don't yeah. understand <laughs> yeah. so yeah. yeah that's a really hard question to really drill down into an answer without somebody who is really an expert in in you know psychology. personalities yeah, and all personality. that kind of thing yeah because sometimes yeah. i think you get drawn into people who have bigger personalities than than you have because yeah. you might not have that confidence too right so you yeah. kind of just you're you're attracted to that confidence level mm, but yeah. i mean so and humans humans are social creatures so we tend mm-hmm. to we tend to adapt and kind of i don't want to say change but we we tend to we, we tend to what's a good way to put it i read this in a book a long time ago the guy the guy like the guy described it as somebody having a strong frame. And if like, basically if you have a strong personality and Mm -hmm. you're around people with like not as strong personalities, they tend to adapt themselves to fit you more than they expect Mm -hmm. you to fit them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, uh, if you just get a person who has just a really strong will, really strong charismatic personality, Mm -hmm. says the right things, promises the right things, um, gets you wrapped up in that. uh, Yeah. yeah, You you can, you can find yourselves basically doing whatever they want. And it's, it's a, slow gradual process i mean i'm not going to meet somebody tomorrow and then the next day they have me out killing you know people to start the revolution like Mm -hmm. i don't know uh, what was the um what was that one guy who who tried to do that uh there's been so many in recent times are you you thinking of manson are you thinking i think of manson yeah manson yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. he he was trying to Mm -hmm. like start like a a world revolution right oh yeah by sending out his followers to murder yeah basically trying to start a skelter yeah, he'll just go. He's yeah. trying to start a, a race war, essentially. Yeah. Legitimately, I, legitimately yeah. was like, "This You're is right. the this is the way to fix society, y'all. Let's get a yeah. bunch of black people and white people killing each other yeah. in the streets." Yeah, yeah. and I that know. didn't happen overnight. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't make a few friends one weekend, and they were out killing the next weekend. It's a long process, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, yeah. That gradual, insidious mind control. Yeah turning up the heat like first week he's having you do maybe some mundane things really innocent yeah. kind of how scientology pulls you in right mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh you're going to give oh, you up, personality up front test. yeah up front scientology yeah. will do some very practical things for you here's how you can manage your money better or here here's a test you can maybe get a better idea of what your personality type is and how to better manage you know any any quirks you might have or here's mm-hmm. how you deal with your family like very practical and in many cases effective uh, advice at first then they that's how they get yeah. you in there and then yeah. they start turning up the heat a little more crazy every time they give you something mm-hmm. um, and then after several weeks several months you're it's, you're out there it's murdering the people frog in the boiling water right yeah. like we've all heard that <laughs> yeah. analogy yeah. a thousand times yeah. but it's such a good analogy yeah. we've you all know. heard that analogy a thousand times we've all heard a thousand times how it's an accurate analogy oh really still, oh yeah yeah oh, I, okay I've, well I've, at least that's what i heard there you, oh, you don't okay. you can't really boil a frog that way but it's a great way to get the point across. It is still it an effective is, analogy, yeah. even though it's not accurate. Yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not saying don't use it. I should research frogs more. <laughs> yeah. should, that's right. Don't I worry, be folks. More skeptical of frogs. And we will not be die. boiling any frogs on this <laughs> yeah. or any no, future will. broadcast. I'll just read about it. That's all that's I'll right. do. <laughs> but I, I've heard, I think at least that's what I've heard. Yeah, I think yeah. both of you have have brought up. Uh, you you both have kind of said this in in different ways in in part from from your experiences, um, and I, I just think it's really really important that it always feels like those people are in a cult, right? Yes. Yeah. It or never feels, it's it's always this like, oh, it can't be me, right? As I go to my MLM meeting for the yeah. third time this week, oh, it's them, it's not me. And I yeah. think that's one of the things that's so valuable about calling out these behaviors that that these these groups do is because the more that that is out there, the more I, I think people are going to start doing that internal investigation more yeah. regularly and say like, you know, it's weird, but the last time I was in this Discord server, they told me that I couldn't like talk about this or this mm-hmm. and 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 then I tried to bring it up and, you know, I, I don't, it's weird how they always shut down conversation on that. Like mm-hmm. that should, again, that's not just to say that yeah, that your 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 local Discord server is is a freaking yeah. cult, y'all. But it should be something yeah. that we all constantly are asking ourselves and saying, like, do I actually have the freedoms in this particular space to think my own thoughts, or mm-hmm. are they telling me what to freaking do all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Like Wes told me to wear this shirt. Like, I don't know. It's it's starting, you guys. It's. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, have you paid your dues? I haven't. 
haven't. I know I'm okay. behind. Well. I'll get on it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get on it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a couple more. Well, we have more questions, but so this is a really mm -hmm. good question. Yeah. It, it's a simple question, but it's really good. Aren't all religions a little bit cult like? Um, I feel like it's yes. <laughs> maybe loosely like it's it's a spectrum definitely mm -hmm. i think we mentioned that at yeah. the beginning um and it comes down to again what what you define a cult to be mm -hmm. um if if it's a religion that has a god involved in it you could say yeah god's that that leader yeah. and oh oh hey great we have this one charismatic individual who's there to tell us what god wants um mm -hmm. you know i think mo i think almost most christian religions can be boiled down to that is is there's a god figure and we have human representatives of this god figure here on the earth and we listen to that i mean in that respect yeah you can you can you're already kind of setting up a cult hierarchy mm -hmm. um you know because if you question that human leader you're questioning god uh, and yeah. that's bad so uh, yeah and so you can you can start maybe start cult touching cult territory in that manner um yeah but then in, in some religions it, it might just stop there and not that i'm here to defend religions or anything like that i just don't want to i don't want to paint overly paint with a broad brush all religions yeah. do this yeah. you know sure but um you're gonna have religions that are like you want to leave okay bye good luck yeah and others will be like we're gonna destroy you um <laughs> yeah so True. it's yeah it's it depends on on where where you ultimately fall on that spectrum yeah and it's yeah. also like religion or even just just the church that you're attending because um, I was in a Pentecostal church. We left, didn't hear from anyone. Yeah. Didn't, uh -huh. Nobody, nobody followed. Uh -huh. It was a big mega church. And yeah. it was like, it's like they didn't even know we were gone because there yeah. was probably like 5,000 people every weekend. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And then we leave the, the Calvinist church and it, I mean, you've all heard me talk about, they like <laughs> broadcast it for seven months from the pulpit yeah. and shamed us. So it's like, wow. so I think it also just depends on even just the specific church that you're yeah. attending mm -hmm. too. So how how large was that Calvinist church? Oh, like left? 80 people. Okay. So yeah. there's a scale, there's a scale issue there. Cause I can see yeah, leaving yeah. a five thousand member church, like you're just like, like one person whatever. in a lot. Like right. Yeah. But that smaller congregation, yeah. And yeah, yeah and, and if they lose people, yeah, they'll they'll make they'll use your example to strengthen the faith of those that remain. Totally. Because mm -hmm. you leaving is a threat to their organization because yeah. If one person can say, hey, I don't believe this anymore, then that can mm -hmm. infect their other yeah. members. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think it has, actually. I think I think because I tune in a little bit just to yeah. like just to hear what their the, the murmurings are. Yeah. And I think someone else is under discipline for doing what we did. And you open the door to Satan, Stacy. I yeah. did. <laughs> and I got so excited. <laughs> Oh my gosh, did I create something? <laughs> and of course they're attributing it to the devil and and I, we are a worker of of Satan and mm -hmm. and stuff. But for me I'm like this is amazing. Good for whoever this person is. So. The uh the Jehovah's Witnesses have a system in place to keep what you did from happening or at least mm -hmm. to curb it as much as possible. They have levels of discipline that mm -hmm. you can go through. Like let's say let's say I'm a Jehovah's Witness in good standing and there's things that i can do and levels of discipline i can go through before finally the ultimate discipline is being branded as an apostate and at that point you're 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 lost like there's there is literally nothing you can do that can bring you back into good wow. favor with god you've basically doomed yourself um we have the first levels uh there's like multiple levels there's there's um uh there's Repro oh, that was it. Rep reproof. You're 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 internally reproved by like let's say let's say I'm a good a, a Jehovah's Witness against standing, and let's say I start watching rated R movies. Okay, like we'll start really really mild. Start watching rated R movies. <clears throat> Elders find out. They'll bring me to a back room. They'll question me. Two or three of them. They'll say, okay, have you what movies have you been watching? What's in them? Have you encouraged anybody else in the congregation to watch them? And if if I'm sufficiently you know uh repentful about it mm -hmm. they'll just internally reprove me it'll be a private reproof it goes into like a file they have but it's not like announced to the congregation or anything like that um next level up let's say i'm watching radar movies and i'm inviting friends over in the congregation and we're watching really bad radar movies like it's <laughs> demonic stuff or stuff that's really gory then maybe they'll probably do a public reproof of me they'll mm. they'll 
they'll say Eric Storch has been reproved. And oh, by the way, here's a special needs parts. Here's a special needs part on not watching rated R movies. And even though they aren't like explicitly linking that to me, it'll be in a way where it's very oh. obvious Eric was reproved for watching rated R movies and inviting other people over to do so. Right. Um, the next level up is disfellowshipping. So like, let's say I am having sex outside of marriage. I'm, I'm dating a worldly girl, girl who's not in, in the, in the congregation. Shame, shame. <laughs> and we're just, we're just having our relationship and I'm having sex with her. Elders find out they discover what's going on. They bring me to the back room. They'll ask me questions and then they can say, okay, we're going to disfellowship you. So mm. disfellowshipping is also announced congregation. They announce it as, Eric Storch is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. They mm -hmm. used to they used to announce it as Eric Storch was disfellowship from the congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now they actually say is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Wow. I still have a hope mm -hmm. of coming back. It takes time. I have to regularly talk to the elders to improve my behavior, go to meetings. But during that time, I can't talk to anyone in the congregation. No one in the congregation can, can talk to me. And wow. they that's how they they wow. I have left the organization. I am publicly speaking out against the organization. I am talking about like basically what I'm doing right now, talk, saying telling people it's 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 nonsense. It's full of lies. Don't go there. Like I'm actively mm -hmm. working against God. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a that's kind of the the, the levels of discipline the they tears, have. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's how they protect their people from bad influences like me. Um, because if they don't do that, then I can just run rampant in the congregation and I can like talk to people about what I'm doing, the videos mm -hmm. I'm making, the research I'm doing, and they, they can't have that. Yeah. So yeah, that would be way too terrible for them. Yeah. 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 And it, it, what, what was fascinating to me in, in that was that, that kind of idea, um, of, of like, Hey, we can't have dissent spreading, amongst our group that's something that's actually very prevalent in a lot of religions um mm -hmm. it's it's very heavily present in islam it's a really really big deal to yeah. mess with the ummah which is the muslim community so like yeah. that's why they have such strict they have such strict dealings when it comes to people that are apostates is oftentimes what the the religious narrative behind it is it's well you're you're actually destroying the fabric of society by going out there and 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 you know preaching against our message yeah. um but it's it's obviously not the fabric of society it's it's their yeah. little cohesive group that they want to maintain insular yeah mm -hmm. and in the right country where islam is is the country's religion and basically in charge yeah the capital yeah. punishment for those of you who offend enough it's yeah it's really yeah. bad um i just wow. wanted to highlight this comment because um i just wanted to say i'm so sorry to katie mm -hmm. um they said i lost my 33 year marriage children to yeah. shunning with that came losing my home friends and pet all because i disagreed with jw policies and doctrine i'm alone now and i just wanted so sorry, to katie. say i'm so sorry for that we're yeah. glad that you're here um this is also a really good time to um, advertise Recovering from Religion, which is a really good organization for anyone who is questioning their faith or needing just even someone to talk to, um, yeah. recoveringfromreligion.org. They also have a, a call number that you can call. I think we have a banner. Yeah, so you can um, call uh, anytime, 184-I-DOUBT-IT, and there are people that are there to talk anytime that yeah. you never know if you need someone to, to talk to so yeah sure. and katie i that that's rough i that's 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 probably some of the most extreme loss somebody can experience especially because of a religion that's mm -hmm. i mean my heart goes out yeah. to you man yeah. uh and it it's difficult i i don't know how long katie's been out or, or mm -hmm. how long it's yeah. been since that whole thing went down um and it may seem hopeless. It may seem like you're at square one again, um, mm -hmm. but you have all the experiences you have up to now in life. You have an online community that yeah. you can interact with. Um, and yeah, it's one step at a time, move forward yeah. and just rebuild. Yeah. And before you know it, you'll have friends. You may have a new relationship. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean what you've lost doesn't have value, but there's still lots and lots to to grow towards. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm 
I'm really sorry to hear that. That's that's really rough. Yeah, that yeah. Is, those are not the comments that we <laughs> enjoy yeah. reading. But, but the thing is, it, it's a reality. Yeah, it like is. we can't we yeah. can't avoid those things, and, yeah. and those people need to be acknowledged and exactly. appreciated and comforted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Good for you for living in reality. It's, <laughs> it's yeah, and, and yeah, that's hard. a that's a great point. That yeah. that is a sacrifice you made for truth. Yeah, and that's it's commendable. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we do have a few more questions before um, we wrap up shortly, but um, I just wanted to highlight this one again, Iron <laughs> Charitier. You are awesome with the questions. Do you want to read it, SR? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you discern the difference from humanity being a cult and a religious cult? It's interesting. We might mm. need a little clarification. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how humanity, like the humanity being a cult, I'm not sure how to interpret and that. And then yeah. the next part, I think he might have put. Um, Will humanity be considered a cult by aliens? That's interesting. That's an interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess it depends on how aliens consider yeah. what aliens consider a cult to be. It depends yeah. on whether or not they kill us all before they study us. You yeah, know, it's like true. if they just come here and wipe us out and use use us for our resources, like they don't care, cult or not, we're in the way. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, humanity. I mean, if we're talking about just humans, um, mm -hmm. we we are a hierarchical society we tend to need leaders or you know we need some type of structure we can't just have straight mm -hmm. up anarchy because exactly we are where we are now because of the way we do things as problematic as our governments are as problem problematic yeah. as humans can be as leaders this system has still enabled us to get right. to this point you know we have technology yeah. we have extended lives we have luxury and comfort at least most of us do there's many people in the world who don't mm -hmm. um but without the way we've been doing things, we wouldn't have what we have now. So, um, yeah, I guess it depends on on exactly what, what you mean by humanity being a cult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Never heard of humanity described in that way, yeah. but because <laughs> then we'd all be in a cult, wouldn't we? Yeah. Who's our leader? <laughs> yeah. Who's our leader? <laughs> Take me to your leader. <laughs> um, okay. So I'll, this one was interesting to me. So I saw an article that Americans are changing their religion more, going from one cult to the next, like changing clothes, Mormon to evangelical, Catholic to Muslim and vice versa. So I that's more of a statement, but um Yeah. I, I don't would know. I would agree a little bit because I sort of kind of did that within Christianity. I went from like one version of Christianity to another. But then I eventually left. So I'm hoping maybe maybe it'll just get people to question things. I, I wonder if this churn is indicative of people just questioning more and just yeah, looking that's... at what they got going. Because, I mean, it's very easy to say, hey, I don't think my religion's true. My religion is true. I'm going to go out and find a better religion. Sure. It's easy for people to say that. Not so many people say my religion's not true. Maybe no religions are true. So mm -hmm. it, I guess it depends on on their mindset and where they're going with their thinking. Do they want to, you know, basically change teams or they do or, or maybe they don't want to play anymore? Um, so, yeah, I, I know I've, I've seen some some polls uh, indicating that 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 non religiosity, non religion, agnosticism, atheism is on a gradual rise while mm -hmm. Christianity is on a gradual decline. Um, in that gradual decline, you may have a lot of churn, just people jumping sure. ship, going to another religion to try it out. And who knows, maybe another decade or two, those same people are like, well, this one's bullshit too. So I'm going to yeah. go over, do another one, or I'm going to finally <laughs> just call it quits. And, you know, hey, I've, I've had enough. Like I only have so much life left and I don't want to, you know, waste it churning exactly. through 3000 religions trying to find the right <laughs> one. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, so I got, oh, I got one real yeah, quick. Yeah, go. If, so just because, you know, uh, skeptics and scoundrels, you know, you know, that's that's kind of in their skepticism, you know, atheism, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, is is skepticism a cult is 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 can can you be too skeptical and that be a cult? Is that I just feel I just I just want to go ahead and like hedge our bets against all the religious yeah. people that watch this later and go, well, <laughs> atheism is a, a cult. Like, that's a that's a good that's a good way to put it uh, or that's a good good uh thing to think of 
I mean, what is skepticism? Skepticism is just a way of thinking. There's no hierarchy. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, uh, leader involved. There's no, I mean, yeah. I won't call it a doctrine. It's just, it's just a strategy of thinking. Right. A tool. Doubt, doubt or withhold belief until sufficient evidence is presented. Mm -hmm. Like that's really all skepticism is. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that'd be, that'd be like, you know, is critical thinking a cult? Right. Uh, yeah. is, is, is credulity a cult? Um, is being too happy a cult? Like it's, it doesn't quite make sense um, with that. But you could have, and, and same thing with atheism. Atheism is just, I don't believe in a God. That's right. literally all atheism is. Um, you could have an organization built around that, built around sure. that type of thinking or built around yeah. that, you know, philosophy. I don't want to call it philosophy, but built around that kind of cornerstone. And you can have a group of people around it and they could build their own rules on top of it and structure something around it. And that could turn into a cult. Sure. But at the core, uh, a position on a single issue or uh, a general strategy and how you think is can't be a cult because it's, it's, it doesn't fit any of the criteria. It's, it's like a category error pretty much because you're not even talking about a thing. You're talking about um, a, a, a label we put on a type of thinking. So yeah, it's a, I, I wouldn't even, yeah, it's a category error basically to me. I like yeah. that. I think that was a great answer, man. Yeah. Very good answer. Um, okay. So there's a couple more. So how many non-religious people do you think there are on the left that does not employ wishful thinking in their committee decisions? More non-believers in Congress for the win. <laughs> how many non-religious people are on the left? That's a really good question. Uh, sometimes I wonder how many non-religious people are on the left that still profess a religion because they need to appeal to voters. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's been like, there was like some talk about, oh, Obama was actually an atheist, but he was posing as a Christian because he needed to get that vote. I don't necessarily believe that or not, but I could definitely see it being plausible. You know, if, if I'm a, if I'm a savvy politician and I know my, my voter base and I'm also an atheist and I'm a little morally flexible in how I present myself, I could see myself saying, yeah, I, I belong to this church. I go to church every day. I could go to church on camera for a Sunday or two, just to kind of prove it and just roll with that. And, and, and that could be my, like my political identity. I can, I can totally see a politician doing that or even multiple politicians doing that, yeah. showing that, that they're actually doing that. That's a different story. You can't, you can't really, you know, read what they're thinking or, 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 or anything like that, unless you have some type of evidence that they are posing as such. Um, definitely, there's going to be less religious people on the left or fewer mm -hmm. religious people on the left because, yeah. you know, conservatism tends to uh, be influenced by Christianity here in the yeah. United States. Um, the Republican Party knows that. That's why they really, they lean so heavily into it. They, they lean into their, into their evangelical voters. Uh, they will, you know, at whatever opportunities they have to, you know, show, hey, we go to church. Hey, we read the Bible. Um, yeah. They, they they lean into that. So they, they know their audience. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't have any solid numbers on that. I would love to, I'd love to see like some <laughs> polls on that and see, but, you know, good luck getting a politician to admit, yeah, I'm posing as a Christian too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, I don't know. Exactly. It's a good question though. It's a good thing to ponder. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I do um, agree with that final sentence there. More non-believers in Congress. Yes. <laughs> make decisions yeah. based on science and rationality not on what you think of magic sky man wants mm -hmm. i think i think we've got our highest numbers you know in the history of our country but i i, I do also think that's still below 10 so it's yeah. like it's like you know i mean that's progress that's good yeah <laughs> we got we doubled but we went from two to four okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the on the flip side of that too this is something i've been pondering as well like i've seen so many bad 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 policies put into place mm. by mostly the Republican party, mm. almost as if it's designed to increase suffering in the country. And I'm wondering how many mm. on that side are basically trying to bring about the last days. Cause like, you know, like, <laughs> uh, uh, you're wrong. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. cause there, there's some, there's some Christian denominations or like, I think yeah. it was a Zionism basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's um, like the seven mountain mandate or the dominionism. Yeah. Or... yeah they think, they think the temple has to literally be rebuilt on the mm -hmm. temple grounds in order to do that. You have to get, you know, the Islam temple out of there. Um, like, or, or, you know, the, the world has to get so bad before God steps in to fix things. So they're right. proactively making it bad so that they can fulfill the pro. Like it makes you wonder how many uh, on the right, probably some on the left too, 
but on the right like how many of them are actually doing that i don't know how many there may be zero i don't know mm -hmm. but it really just when I, sometimes when i see some of the stuff that comes out of that side i'm like are they doing this on purpose are they trying to make people suffer on purpose there, yeah. there is there is definitely a group in the gop that for years has expressed the reason that they not only are so in support of the state of israel but particularly the far right likud party is because it is only through Jews and Christians working together in the Holy Land that Jesus will return and slaughter yeah. all the non-believers. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Bonkers. It is. It is. It's very. Bonkers. It's very, very upsetting. Um, yeah, yeah. It does. Oh, go ahead. That's go ahead. what I was gonna say. I think that's kind of what my grandma believes. I'm pretty yeah, sure. There's some yeah. unfortunate, and it's growing in. It's yeah. growing in the U.S. That yeah. that mindset, and it yeah. it it does make me, it does make me wonder what what you think about. Should there be legal ramifications when it comes to cults? Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not here saying like, oh, we need to be passing laws about what people think. There's no mm -hmm. way to fix that. That's just yeah. going to be the case. The best thing we can do is this and discourse and, and education and stuff. But should, is there a point at which a particular organization is actively you know, getting people into their organization with like, let's just say, for instance, like the Proud Boys who, you know, helped organize the January 6th riot, you know, mm -hmm. like, is, is there a point before taking action that that the state should should step in and, and say, like, hey, you guys shouldn't be allowed to do this or like, where do you where do you because I'm not sure where I come down on that. I, I yeah. think that's a very difficult situation. Uh, we've actually already kind of seen something like this happen. So the short answer to your question is, yes, I do think we should hold organizations accountable, not necessarily individuals. I mean, because mm -hmm. thoughts and beliefs are not a crime. It's it's right. what you put right. into right. action that is the crime or not. Um, and many organizations have put very harmful things into actions. Yeah. Uh, but there's actually a concrete example of what you were just talking about that just happened recently. I, Jehovah's Witnesses lost their nonprofit charity status in, I think, Norway. Norway? Or, oh. Yeah, I think it was Norway. I think it was Norway. Wow. Based on their disfellowshipping practice because uh, the state over there considers, uh, uh, how did exactly they go down? You know, disfellowshipping is basically we are going to isolate this one person, cut them off from their family, cut them off from their community. And the Norway government said, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot pressure people to not associate <laughs> with their family members based on a difference in religious belief. Good. And um, so the witnesses think that, you know, they're beholden to God and not to government. Oh, they think they're beholden to governments, but mm -hmm. only as far as it doesn't conflict with what God wants them to do, uh, in which yeah. case they, they are beholden to God. <laughs> oh. So they 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 doubled down on their position as fellowshipping because they're basically saying we can't we can't have one country practicing a different doctrine and everyone else doing the opposite. So they they tried to hold their ground. Mm -hmm. They were given numerous opportunities to revise their stance on that, and the government the Norway government finally says, "Fine, you're no longer a charity. You now owe us taxes." Amazing. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, same thing happened down in uh, Australia with the Australia Royal Commission that went down about six seven years ago now. Um, huge child abuse scandal yeah. down in Australia, which is indicative of a more worldwide scandal among the mm -hmm. witnesses, which other countries have picked up on. Uh, but essentially, uh, in a nutshell, Joe's witnesses were over the past 50 years. Uh, they had 1000 child abusers on their records, about 1600 uh, abuse victims, oh zero God. reported to the police by the elders. Ugh. Um and so yeah. anyway, the and they were one of multiple organizations that were exposed for doing this. The Australian government put together a royal commission, which is like a it's a very mm -hmm. powerful court council that has far reaching powers in this one category of we're investigating child abuse. Wow. Um, the witnesses were one of many organizations that were basically brought onto trial multiple days of testimony and questioning. And then afterwards, the Australian government put together a, uh, a redress scheme, basically like, here's a plan to help these organizations reform and do better mm -hmm. and also give reparations and, and, and compensation to the victims. Uh, the witnesses were one of the only two that were like holdouts mm -hmm. uh, from adopting the redress scheme because the witnesses are like, wow. these are our doctrines. Like you need like to the witnesses, you need to have two witnesses for an elder to take an action 
on a supposed crime. And oh my gosh. in child abuse, yeah. you're never going to have two witnesses. I mean, no. it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be no. so rare that occurs. No. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that's why they, be, yeah. Uh. So anyway, they, they resisted and resisted and resisted because they cannot capitulate to these government demands because it shows that they aren't obeying God until finally, I think at the last minute, they finally said, fine, we'll sign up for the redress scheme. Wow. And even then they're like resisting wow. making the changes or doing everything they can to just prolong the process and mm -hmm. to keep themselves from having to change their doctrines. But wow. um, those, those two examples of the government yeah. stepping in and saying, your yeah. practices are violating are human rights. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I absolutely think that a government should step in and absolutely. intervene where, where appropriate. Yeah. yeah absolutely. That, that's awesome. And and I'm I'm glad you brought up both of those examples. Uh right right before we went live. I was hoping uh, you'd bring this yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's it's fascinating. Um and right before we went live, because we were talking about Stephen Hassan and his relation to yep. uh, the Moonies and stuff. A couple of months ago, the the prime minister at the time of Japan was was shot by an individual. And the reason that this individual stated was because yeah. when he was a child. His mother was a part of the Moonies and they basically, you know, brainwashed her into giving up all of their finances. And so he grew up, you know, very, very poor and had a very, very difficult time and all of this. So Japan recently passed a new law after after the wake of this that had to do with essentially um, uh, threatening members. An organization is no longer allowed to threaten members with with torture of any kind so that they pay money. You're mm -hmm. also not allowed to teach kids that they have to believe something. Otherwise, it's otherwise they'll be tortured. And I just I, I yeah. love I love that you you brought up those other examples, too, mm -hmm. because international law like that, folks, is deeply important because yeah. the more countries that we see coming in and saying, no, this is actually within our domain. Yeah. You yeah. are hurting our citizens. And that's, that's our, pur our purview. Like that, that gives more uh, justification in the United States to push back on so much of this Christian nationalism crap. Yeah. Like it, it, it was, it, yeah, that, that was an amazing, um, amazing <laughs> thing that they ended up doing from that. I had not heard about Norway, I think that's freaking awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, big, big support of all of that. So I'm, I'm moving to Scandinavia. So <laughs> good. <laughs> I have said that more than once in my life. <laughs> Man, I mean, come on, like it's not bad. Though. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm watching the Hillsong documentary right now, and they're going over oh. the whole, uh, what you just mentioned with Australia and and the them stepping in and. My stuff. I'm, I have one more episode left, but I had to stop because episode three was all about the yeah. the essay within Hillsong Church and the cover ups, yeah. and it's just oh, so yeah. I mean, it's just you just scratch the surface, and it, it it's so deep. I mean, that's kind of not what we're here to talk about, but it it, yeah. it kind of it ties in. It ties I mean, in. Hillsong, yeah. you could you could probably label Hillsong a cult. I oh, mean, you, you like? Right? I would say so, and. Yeah. Uh, Actually, that kind of goes to the next question that I was going to put up on the screen. I did that on purpose. That's why. Did I you? Did yeah, no. Oh, no, you're no. so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. So can mainline but slash progressive churches mm. qualify as being called dicks? So when I thought when I think of mainline, I think of more of like the kind of like Hillsong, which is sort of um, like the user friendly is what I wanted to say, but they, they draw like you that. in. Right. Um, but then progressive churches, I don't think of as well, Hillsong, you got to watch the documentary, but yeah, I think they kind of can be cultic, but I'm wondering if, mm -hmm. if Michael is referring to progressive as far as accepting uh, like LGBTQ, maybe that's what he's referring to. So mm. I don't know. I've never heard of Hillsong and I've never seen that blows my mind. Yeah. yeah so you, the funny thing is like witnesses wit I, I I just learned what Calvinism was about six months ago. Oh, that's yeah. that's how sorry, man. That's how yeah. insulated witnesses are yeah, from no like other kidding. religions. Yeah. That's a See, bummer of an ideology. We knew everything yeah. about you. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny? Like and witnesses are told like we're so knowledgeable about the Bible. You don't need to worry about those other religions. Like, don't worry about them. They're all they're all under the control of Satan. We're the one and only true Christian organization. Yeah. All the rest of them, like uh, uh, Babylon the Great in the Book of Revelation, the the harlot on yeah. the uh, on the, the multi headed beast. Yeah. That they, they we were always told that that the multi headed beast represents world governments. Babylon the Great, the harlot on it, is uh, a representative of. A, a false religion and it's okay. a, it's a representation of the false religions relationship with 
world governments and how witnesses are not that. So we were always told that, you know, uh, don't worry about studying other religions. You don't need to worry about their doctrines You because you're, you're never you're never going to listen to them preach to you. You're going to preach to them. Oh and uh, so, yes, I was very insulated and I've learned a lot about other religions since I left, especially, you know, past year or so when I really yeah. like really ramped up my YouTube Ugh. content consumption on on, you know, skepticism and atheism and channels like yeah. uh, Apologia, uh, Atheist Experience, The Line, mm -hmm. um, Prophet Azad, uh, among others. You know, I've learned a lot more about different denominations, but I just happened to just learn about you know, Calvinism a few months ago yeah. or six months ago. Um, and yeah, uh, so it's hard to tell whether they're a cult or not. Like I said, you gotta, you gotta come up with the, your standard for what a cult is and evaluate it based on that. And that's why I like the yeah. buy model because the buy model is very specific. It's, it's, it's straightforward. It's, yeah. it's, it gives you a, it's a nice gauge between zero and a hundred and your organization is going to fall somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to find very few organizations that are at zero, very few that are at a hundred, but you're going to yeah. have some, most of them in the middle. Yeah, and you just got to figure out where where's your zone of comfort. Like, where at what point is it too much for you to to uh, to not deal with? Yeah, yeah. Apology yeah. and profit is odd. Yeah, they're both really they're both good. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the next one would be when does a cult become a religion? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's a yeah. 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 Um, so I guess what 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 definition do you normally use, Eric? When when, when you say religion, because again, like yeah. atheism is a religion, like skepticism is a religion. Like I, I tend to take a, a little bit more strict of a stance me with too. my yeah. definition. Yeah, so me too. that kind of like formalized traditions and rituals with a belief in the supernatural of some some yeah. aspect. OK, OK. That, that's so going to be tends to be what I, uh, I look at, too. Uh, I look at tenants like are mm -hmm. there rules? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, this is the this is the the true thing. Like like if you ask, like what what statement does atheism make? Like atheism yeah. makes no statements other than you're claiming a God exists. I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> right. That's right, the right, only right, statement right, it makes. Right. And I guess you and have that's to not, adhere to that. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's not, and that's not, I must adhere to that. That's not me saying I must not believe you. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if that was the, the case, then yeah, you can mm -hmm. maybe call atheism a cult, but it, nothing about atheism says that I must not believe you. My stance is I won't believe you until you provide me evidence. And that's where the skepticism comes in. That's if, if atheism and skepticism together, basically, we're saying, I cannot believe you. I must not believe you. Now you may be talking about a religion at that right. point, getting, getting there. Cause now you have a tenant, you know, you, you must not believe this claim. Right. Um, and that's not what any atheist I've ever listened to or heard of or talked to has ever said anywhere. You might have a Christian or two who claims that's the case, but, or a religious person, uh, but that's not really the case there. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, hierarchy, organization, um, tenants, supernatural element can also be involved there. Uh, right. I don't think you necessarily have to have a supernatural element there, but most commonly you're going to have one, some mm -hmm. type of higher power where, you know, the, the rules are derived from, or the, uh, the, the tenants are derived from basically, you know, you obey this being, or you, you treat the universe in this way, or, you know, um, so yeah, that's kind of where I get in there. Uh, mm -hmm. organization and tenants and rules and stuff is where we're going to start getting religion uh, okay. involved. Yeah. I just wanted to highlight this. <laughs> so I've noticed that too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very jealous. No, I'm uh, no, you guys are. No, that's it's just a up, temperature <laughs> thing. Honestly, that's all it is. It's you're a up temperature there with your shreddies and your yeah. free health care. <laughs> Oh. And free healthcare <laughs> and our smoky sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's so smoky. Yeah. Oh, yes. Down here in Seattle, yeah, we get your smoke every once in a while. We have our own forest forest too out yeah. east. But yeah, a lot of times yeah. it comes out from the north. And oh, every yeah. every August, late summer, I'm like, You're like, I'm thanks a lot. Fires. Blame I can't Canada. <laughs> I go outside and my eyes burn and my throat hurts. Yeah. yeah it's really bad here today. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we have a couple more, but I feel like we've kind of gone through them and yeah, I feel like they're, they've been kind of answered already. So unless um, there's anything else that we can add to summarize, um, this has been awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I've enjoyed great. this so much. Yeah, that was a great stream. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah, guess I would just cap it off with, um, yeah. Uh, 
if there's any religious folk watching this, yeah, I'm not saying you're in a cult, but you should ask yourself that question. Mm-hmm. Are you in one? How would you know? What are the identifiers that you would look for when it comes to what a cult is and, mm-hmm. and, and whether or not you're seeing that or not? Um, yeah. I, I can tell you as a witness, if I were to ask that, be asked that question, it would be very difficult for me to answer because it's really hard to examine something that's so personally close to you. That's part of your identity. That's part of your salvation is your hope for the future. It's really hard to take a, take a, 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 a critical look at that and go, is this really standing up to real scrutiny? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's like seeing the forest for the trees. If you're in the middle of a forest, you can't see the size and scale of the forest. You can't really, you only see an individual trees because you're in the middle of it. Once I left my organization, my religion, and I was looking at the forest from the outside, now I get a better idea of its size and scope and what mm-hmm. it actually is. Um, so it's, it's a difficult thing to do. And I, my, my recommendation is if, if, if somebody's watching, they want to really examine whether the organization they're involved with, whether it be religious or whatever, is a cult is for a moment do your best to put down the emotional need for your organization to be true and correct and right just it'll still be there for you you can go back to it but just for a moment set aside that need just say Mm -hmm. listen i'm okay for just a moment i'm okay with the possibility that my organization might not be exactly what i think it is and then start examining it ask some critical questions give yourself honest and hard answers (laughs) And if you, and this is part of deconstruction, um, yeah. you can deconstruct your religion without deconverting. Just, just all you gotta do is put down an emotional need sure. and start asking some critical questions and, and examining things. Yeah. Um, and if you come to the conclusion that, hey, my religion's okay, or oh, hey, my organization isn't these things, and you can honestly tell yourself that, mm-hmm. then go ahead and go back to it and pick it back up and pick up that emotional need again. Um, but that's the hard part is like I said, putting putting aside that, kind of human primal urge that hey mm-hmm. i need this to be true yeah because um, it can be it can be and if it's not it's painful it if, is. Yeah. if it's not it's painful it's hard to walk away from but it's mm-hmm. you're better off for it in the long run and it really helps you out absolutely so yeah yeah no that, that's really good advice because i i feel all of that and i felt all of that at the beginning so yeah yeah um thank you so much everyone for being here and um where can everyone find you eric <laughs> yeah um i have a youtube channel called skeptics and scoundrels mm-hmm. i'm waiting for jimmy to do the outro over no. <laughs> did, did you guys watch that <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> jimmy's great Don't um worry. anyway i'm sorry yeah, uh i uh, I, have, I have a youtube channel called skeptics and scoundrels mm-hmm. i've been doing a lot more live content lately i'm going mm-hmm. to go back to doing some pre-made content yeah. um life's been a little busy at this point and i do this as a hobby so i'm not entirely regular with my video output I'm trying to do like live stuff to fill in the gaps, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. So I have that YouTube channel, Skeptics and Scoundrels. I have a Twitter account, which I picked a really bad time to pick up Twitter because that's right after Elon Musk bought it. Um, so <laughs> no, I'm it's not sure. free now. It's freedom of speech now. You picked the yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but as far as I know, I think that's the best, still the biggest mm-hmm. social media platform out there, other than Facebook. And mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, I'm on Twitter at Skept and Scound. Oh, hey, my pragmatic crystal. Thanks for the. Thanks for the link there. This is your channel. Yep. So yep. everyone can go and subscribe. Yep. Oh, and uh, and I am planning on doing a multi-part series on this book and how it applies Ooh. to Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. So I'm going to have a whole episode talking about the bite model in general. And then I'm going to have four follow-up episodes, each talking about an individual letter um, and how the witnesses fit it. So that'll and that's something that will be hopefully. That'll be awesome. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have at least some of those episodes produced and, and out, out there. So that's kind of what we have in the future. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Thank you. And uh, SR, Secular Rarity, where can people find you? Uh, if you guys aren't doing anything in like an hour and a half, <laughs> I'll be on uh, Atheist Republic for our weekly show. This week, we will be tearing down a Muslim apologist who is supporting Andrew Tate and the sex trafficking that he's been doing. So if you think there is a good, <laughs> a good justification, why not come on by as we make oh fun God. of how horrible they are? I, I can't believe the guy did it, but you know, he did. Oh, he went wow. on camera, he said it to his millions of people. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that. Um, wow. Otherwise wow. I'm on atheist experience every so often. And uh, 
here. I come hang out here. You a lot, do. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I open my YouTube and there's like a new video that it's, I'm like, oh, there's SR. Oh, it's there's- it, it's <laughs> awkward for me. And like I I stopped I stopped like looking at YouTube when I'm out like in public <laughs> because one time I was sitting at a bar and my buddy leaned over and he goes what the fuck is that? And I just went, oh no, that's a <laughs> no. weird face. Nope. The guy said something stupid. Just don't worry about just it, man. It. Oh, I'm, so I, I'm doing the same thing at my job now when I'm at the office. I got <laughs> to be careful when I break up YouTube. Yep, I have yep. two YouTube accounts. I have my personal one that I try to keep as free as possible mm-hmm. for my atheist content. Mm-hmm. And then I have my atheist account because right. my atheist account, my, my face is starting to pop up more and more. You've been going around lately, brother. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I, quite unexpectedly. Um, yeah. Yeah, just it's things awesome. are kind of just snowballing. So I'm just kind yeah. of seeing where it goes. But yeah, yeah I got to be careful too at work because I don't want people. I don't want people to know I'm doing this. Not because I'm ashamed or anything like that. I just don't want to complicate things at work. I, it, yeah. I just it's gonna take so. Yeah. There's gonna be so many conversations now. Yeah. And it's like, people, dude, please stop. People get touchy. <laughs> people get touchy yeah. about religion. Not yeah. everybody does, but some people do. And I don't want to risk that. I want to keep my work environment <laughs> professional, and just so I can do my job and go home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I try my best to insulate those two lives yeah. apart from each I, other yeah i get it because i open youtube and my face is there and my kids mm-hmm. are like mommy you're on you no, it's yeah totally yeah. the yeah. same thing because no, where concern. where can people find you stacy there's there's a place oh, people yeah. can find you now oh yes okay so again crystal is with the links all the time she's oh, amazing yeah. Yeah. Uh, my mom and i have our own channel so everyone can go and subscribe to the stacy's mom podcast we're having a great time so um, thanks to everyone who has subscribed already and has watched us. I'm always like pleasantly surprised because we have a very small subscriber count, which is we have to start somewhere. Um, but when we do our our shows and and there's people there, I'm like, oh my gosh, we have people. <laughs> so thank you to everyone. Um, and you guys have watched too. So thank you so much. It's always so great when um when I, when I see you guys in the chat. So um, also, we don't want to forget, we want to um, uh, thank our patrons. And also, after I do this, you have something to do, SR. Mm-hmm. I have uh, work. Okay. okay, you have work. <laughs> I just want to make sure. So thank you to our patrons um, that support us on Patreon. Uh, Sydney Davis Jr. Jr., Eric Ozels, Tara S., Ryan, Denine Murphy, Dan D., Michael Wiseman, Kathy Cotton, Cindy Plaza. Sorry for the running. That's my child. <laughs> Sunny Shell, Aaron Coulson, and Phil Calderon. So thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, it really means a lot to have people who are and here in the chat and and financially yes go ahead even even though you won't necessarily go to hell if you don't become a patron here okay mm-hmm. we we can't 100 percent guarantee so just in case right. it might be a good idea just to start becoming a patron your, yeah just in case your, yeah, yeah exactly just saying. yeah so, again <laughs> But also, I'm sure you know that there are wonderful, wonderful shows on this channel. So don't forget to check out all the other great stuff like Secular Soapbox, which we're on right now on Wednesdays. Then Thursdays, you've got Sunny Shell with the Sunny Spot. Saturday, the Global Atheists and Women Atheists Unload. And finally, on Sundays, Let's Talk. So you know there's always something good going on here, folks. And there are always really super cool people. So, uh, yeah, come hang out. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. And we will see you here again next Wednesday. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>